In this episode, I talked to Sarah Latanzio, who stopped by to basically chat content marketing and how it's evolved over the past few years in B2B. So here are a couple things you're going to learn. First off, she went through her process for collecting information when she gets a new content marketing client and actually building that strategy out from scratch. So you'll learn that. And then also innovative ways for companies to use LinkedIn, especially B2B companies. Uh, so let's dive right into the episode. And we'll we'll just dive right into it. So if if you wouldn't mind, just to kind of set the tone for this interview and give people a little context on who you are, would you give us just the bullet points of your career as a marketer and what you're focusing on now? Okay. Um, well, I'm Sara Stella Latanzio. I'm a B2B marketer that has been, yeah, most of their life in B2B with a bit of B2C as well. Um I have focused, especially in the last uh, couple of years, officially on content marketing. I think now that's where marketing is at in general. Uh, I'm saying officially because before it was always in the air. I had also a lot of side projects, but now I want to do it um, in my job. I've grown quite a bigger audience on LinkedIn, now about 30,000 followers. And so this gives me also the opportunity to explore some freelancing on content marketing on the side. And, and could you just walk us through what your general client work kind of looks like now? Um, what are people coming to you for? What work do you help them with? What kind of your process? So I I'm mo I'm I do consulting more than really operations also because I'm just one. Um but basically the overall pain point is that companies are starting to realize that they don't have a strategy for it. So they get very frustrated that they're investing so much time in it. You know, they also hire maybe larger content teams, but there is nothing to pull the strings together, you know. And um I think for me obviously I experience this very, very often uh, in-house and B2B has the problem that unless you're marketing to marketers, um, like most of those companies having a lot of success on LinkedIn are doing, your hands are tied if there is no real ways to aggregate all the information in-house, right? And this means if you don't have this channel of communication with sales in a sales-led motion, and maybe this channel of communication more with product if you have a PLG motion. And so I, I help pulling, pull all the strings together, um, also reorganize a bit what's there because um, obviously we're purposing is a bit big topic as well. There are also a lot of companies who are just churning out content, but every time they they start from scratch, you know, so it feels like, I need to do so much work. Well, in reality, you just need better, better process, uh, processes, for example. So when, when a B2B company comes to you for help for, you know, developing a, a bigger strategy, what are the big mistakes that you typically see them making already that you need to correct? Uh, okay. So first of all, looking at the situation the, the first point is understanding their business strategy because this will determine all the rest, right? So if, if there is no, if, if, if there is a complete disconnect between the content and the business strategy, that's already the first conceptual thing to, to fix. Um, but, but also if they have like a messaging and, and positioning that is in place or not, because content is an amplificator, you know? So I don't even get into it if the base is not, it's not there. If the problem is more really on the implementation side, then, you know, I want to see if what understanding they have on the, of the client, if they have a way to create content based on what the client really wants and needs, or if they're just a, a, a sum, a, doing assumptions and basically saying, oh, okay, it's a marketer. I think marketers like TikTok. Let's talk about TikTok, you know? So I think to make it simple, it's the first thing is seeing if there is audience fit, audience content fit, audience channel fit, you know, like, are you, are you addressing the people in the right channels? Are you also creating the right content for said channel? Are you stretching yourself too thin, meaning maybe you are two people and you're trying to be all over the place, then better start focusing your, your, your energies in one, in one spot, right? 
And then if this is already done, then you can look at the tactics and you can be like, oh, can we just, you know, optimize all the blocks that you have, you know? Um, can we make, you know, your, your content on social more social friendly because it's actually not, you know, it not optimized for social. Um, yeah, and oftentimes maybe it's also the way they produce content. You know, what I said before, if they really don't work consistently with their subject matter expert, then there is also something to fix in, in the process to create content in the content operations. So for these B2B companies that, that come to you, they have probably already tried content, but like most B2B kind of know they need to do it. So they probably tried and failed before. And and then also there's this other side of it, which is B2B is really broad. Like there there's so many different industries covered under that umbrella, so many different customers you could target. So when companies come to you wanting help with, with their content, how do you actually process all of the information for a new industry and get prepared to suggest that content strategy? Like what's your process for collecting information and becoming comfortable with who the company is so that you can actually tell them, here's the content you should make? So uh, that's a very good point because I think that's a very big misconceptions because especially on LinkedIn and, you know, podcasts, it really seems that B2B is basically SaaS, you know, and there is so much more. And I mean, I've worked most of my career in, uh, in kind of enterprise co software consulting. So total ABM play, you know, where it's really not about volume and where, yeah, where basically almost creating one-to-one -one marketing is the key. So mm, for me, usually it's really about, you know, having first workshops with all the people that are somehow involved in content production. And very often you realize that they don't even know they should be involved, you know? And so the first step to make, make this work is really bringing those people at the table and getting internal buy-in because once people realize that content is nothing, nothing less than just a way to get also their own targets, right? Their own goals then they will be collaborative, not just, oh, yeah, help us create content. Why should I do that, right? Um, and then, obviously, I mean, it would be ideal if you can do customer interviews yourself or at least give them the key to do them systematically to, you know, create really those value props, canvas to with pain points and gains and pains and really how the product solves all of that. Because most companies still think that a buyer persona is kind of marketing Maggie, you know, and then they're like, oh, why are our personas are useless? Yes, clearly, because they're not focused on pain points. Um, but then also digging a bit deeper, you know, in, in into the product, because I get it that you should start from the customer, but it's also very, very important to to understand what the product does and all the use cases, you know. Um, for, for, for things that people are already searching, you know, because ultimately you also want to make the mistakes, which a lot of companies do to just, you know, create a lot of top of the funnel content that is completely unrelated to the, the prop, their practical problems that they can solve. And then obviously, you know, if they have, if they have also a customer success function, which depends, I mean, some, some companies don't have, for example, the company where I currently work, they have account managers. So also complementing all of this, you know, with the people who talk with ongoing customers versus sales is talking with prospects. Also, this side of things can help a lot, especially if you have customer support tickets, for example, that's a bunch of content ideas. Um, so building all those sources of information, I think, is always the best way. Sometimes you have more time and you can really do it with people. Sometimes you need to just you know, go over the documentation, do some social intelligence. Um, but in a nutshell, that's how I do it. When, when you look back, so you've been, you've been doing content marketing for a while. If you look back to the first day that you were introduced to content marketing and what that looked like compared to what content marketing looks like now, what are the big changes that stand out to you? So, uh, I mean, when I started, I didn't know it was c called content marketing and nobody called it content marketing. And I feel it was a lot more like blogs, you know, it was really like blogs, events, that's it. And events wasn't even content marketing because it was just like pitching, you know. So um, I feel that the transition is definitely that um, that 
people are starting to realize content marketing is something holistic. You know, there is no longer this disgregation between social blogs. You know, it's kind of one thought and the more you can connect it, the better. Um, and also, I think, especially in B2B companies are realizing, okay, actually, it's also no longer just marketing, you know, because before it was really like, okay, I'm hiring marketing, I'm hiring you know, a blog writer, whatever, it's their job. I'm spending the money on them. They should do it, you know? And now they realize, no, actually it's, it's a GTM strategy. Like we should all work together and bring out the message, right? Also because outbound, cold outbound is becoming less and less official, you know? And actually, my, uh, efficient, sorry. Um, actually, my current company, one thing I really, really like um, also why I took the job was that we had, I mean, we have an internal content team, so we can create most of the content in-house, but also we have um, two market uh, marketing managers because the company is basically bis different business lines. So it's kind of having different businesses within a business. And so you have those marketing managers that work cross-functional and are in charge of getting the content done for those market units and working with the subject matter experts. And I think this is super important, you know, that you don't, you don't have the silos also in, in the organizational structure. And the last thing that I've noticed is also that more and more really this thing about corporate influencers is becoming real. You know, there were always those people who were super engaged to organize meetups in their free time and all of those things. And now companies are putting money behind behind it, maybe helping them create their own YouTube channels, all of those things. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's certainly happening. When um, so from my experience talking content marketing with with companies, a lot of the time they just kind of want to jump right to channels. What are the ch what's the channel that's going to work? And, and like you said, a long time ago, or maybe not that long ago, blogs were kind of that was all of content marketing. Are you doing a blog or not? That was content marketing. And it was very channel focused. And it, it's still like that. There are just more channels now um, to, to select from. So I'm just curious from your perspective, before you help a client see what channel is going to work for them, what are the things that come before that, that the check boxes that you need to make sure are there before you then say, oh, well, social media can work really well for you or, or TikTok or blog posts? Well, I mean, ideally, obviously, it's like interview the audience, know where they're active. But I think it's, I mean, sometimes it's pretty straightforward. You know, there are those channels where I would never say you will not be able to reach your audience there. I mean, a blog, I think it's just a must also because for most companies, it's the pillar content, you know, to then do all the rest. And obviously for LinkedIn, for, for B2B, LinkedIn is always the top choice. So I would always recommend them as a base. And then, you know, if somebody has more capacity, if they want, if they really believe in content marketing and think, okay, you know, let's put also some branding on it. Let's do the podcast or let's, you know, do something crazy on TikTok because we want to test, then why not, you know? But it's a bit like first, you know, do your homework and then when you have free time, you can go crazy and have fun, you know? And so actually, I, I rather do the opposite. I rather completely stop, uh, advise to stop all the experimentation stuff when I see there is no baseline for the really important things, you know? And this usually gives also more confidence because when, when somebody's like, oh, I actually am doing something consistently and we're seeing the results, then they also get the, the buy-in and and... And also the confidence to test something that maybe might work out or maybe not. Let's let's double click on LinkedIn for just a second. You mentioned that as a channel that usually makes a lot of sense for B2B. Not every time, but but a lot of the time. Hmm. In your experience, have you seen any like interesting ways that companies have used LinkedIn beyond just setting up a company page and posting and hoping that people will engage with it? Are there any clever ways or, or interesting examples you can think of, of companies that have really used LinkedIn very well? Yes, but I have to make a disclaimer. And I think, um, so the answer is, I believe the, the most impactful way you can use is really having your people being active on LinkedIn. The disclaimer is they have to be active on LinkedIn. 
and they need to put their own time in it because otherwise the entire strategy fails, you know, and I've worked with some people who are, who love doing it, you know, obviously they're not influencer. I think there's always this, this misconception that you need to become, you know, the next star, millions of followers, but in B2B, you don't need that. You just need to have a small engaged audience, you know, but there are also a lot of those people who maybe get super happy about the internal training, which I sometimes offered, you know, and then keeping consistency is very hard. Also, because if you don't don't have this this passion for communicating, for you know engaging, and and you don't make it past the time where you see results, you you give up, you know. But to be honest, all the things I would really advise if people want to put the work in is building the personal brands of the experts, making it as easy as possible for them. And then maybe putting on, on those plays and doing, you know, like LinkedIn lives with customers, uh, finding a way to repurpose stuff between the company page and, and, and the employees' personal pages, like all of those things. Last question here. Um, we talked about what content marketing looks like when you started versus where it is kind of now. G looking forward now, if, if you wanted to say 10 years from now, what would be some of your predictions or interesting takes about what B2B content marketing looks like in 2034? <laughs> well, uh, my audience knows very well that I don't do predictions because I'm not a magician, but I would say, so first of all, obviously, um, the personal touch in the sense you can really see that that communication is becoming decentralized, you know, that Nobody believes anymore in the company, official company outlet, you know. So really building those ecosystems with experts, so meaning also investing in experts who are also content creators, are either build them up becoming experts or build them up becoming content creators, whatever is easier. And also some influencers, you know. So becoming just a company is basically just the, the financer of this thing and, and giving input and, and giving the knowledge and the possibility, but then the stage is on the people. Um, and then um, I also believe obviously AI, you know, but not like AI, chat, GPT is everything, but just, you know, automate all the stuff that is sucking so much time of us every day so that people can do a more meaningful work, you know, um, and really, and really make great creative content that has an impact because to date I believe the only thing that AI cannot do yet is really the creativity and the pattern interruption. So those two things I those two things I would say. Awesome. Well as we wrap up here would first off thank you so much for for spending your time here today. I'd like to give you just a chance to talk through what you're working on right now and where people can find you to connect. Well, um, you can find me on LinkedIn, obviously. That's where I hang out most of the times. And yeah, I'm working um, at, mo at the moment mostly in-house at, uh, at Novum, a Swiss software company. And on the side, I, I do some advisory for content marketing. And I also, from time to time, work as an influencer with brands. I don't know how you, you can call it, but uh, that's a new thing I, I really like doing as well, if I believe in the brand, obviously.